Hi friends, it's Brandon and welcome to Nature Meets Paper. I love taking you on adventures to discover the wonderfully created world all around us. Marine and aquatic animals are my main focus, but I might sprinkle in a few other animals here and there. What's going on? Been a while since I last posted. Let's do a quick recap of last year while I show you my Christmas card design. This is a 16 by 20 canvas using acrylic paints featuring a grizzly bear I called Merry Christmas. I had a rough idea where I wanted to go and you will see me change my mind several times to get where I wanted. Right, so I disappeared around June. Where did I go? I was making content a little slower than I was wanting. I was also making content that I wasn't super enthusiastic about. Each video took roughly two weeks to create, and I was getting around 27 vi views per video. I truly appreciate those who watched. I love you so much. Well, one day my computer decided it was going to act up and slow way down. I knew the signs of imminent failure, so I spent eight hours one day transferring every completed project onto an external hard drive. I then went through and transferred all my templates, my research, reference photos of sea creatures, uh, Photoshop files, video editing software needed, and about a day later I had a massive failure on my computer and it crashed. It didn't just like bump the dock while heading to land, it crashed on a deserted island leaving me stranded like Gilligan's Island. All my data was gone and couldn't be read. Basically wasn't there. That's fine. I have my signal flare and my life ring in my external hard drive, right? Wrong. What I thought was transferred files was nothing. All my projects, data, files, reference photos had not transferred to the new drive. What my computer failed to do was send data over. And there it is. I lost everything that I was working for. Uh, I had to save up to buy a new laptop that could handle the workload. It wasn't just that. I was burned out. I was working too hard, running around too much, not letting my body rest. Uh, it turns out that I had long COVID from August till about December, and I was just fatigued and tired. Uh, I just didn't feel like continuing this business. So what changed? Well, I am rested and have been thinking hard about how I want to run this educational and adventure-based channel to the best of my ability. I also met so many wonderful people during my art shows during the summer and winter. I have also leaned into my faith as a Jesus follower even more. I am plugged into my community, I am in the Word daily, and I want God to have all the glory. So, I will be making content that I want to make. I want senses of adventure, mystery, power, curiosity, and awe going forward. I still love my sea creatures and my scientific papers. However, I will not be designing these videos like a scientific paper anymore. Scientific papers are interesting to those who use them all the time, but to the non-science-minded people, they are extremely boring or overwhelming. I will be going over techniques I am using in my paintings, some science or fun facts about the animal, and will be putting who I am into these videos. I still don't have any reference photos, but I can now compose interesting and storytelling scenes from both above and below the water. So that's my journey. Want to climb aboard and see where God takes us? I 
so you decided to continue with our adventure. It, I can't say I have a planned out schedule or anything. That is what adventure is about. Leaving the path and exploring. While creating my Christmas cards that I send out every year, I think about a pun to incorporate in the title. This year I decided to go with Berry Christmas. I like playing with light with my paintings, so I looked up several free stock photos online. From there, I was able to create the feeling I was going for. I wanted to have a grizzly bear on the side of a mountain during sunset, overlooking mountains, and an alpine lake. It took about nine photos combined to get what I was imagining. Brilliant orange and yellow sunset, kissed clouds with some purple sky with stars peeking through. Light pink to dark blue forest spotted mountains winding their way closer to the viewer with an alpine lake resting in the middle. Crossing the field of view is the mountainside that we are standing on, reaching diagonally down from the right to the left, covered in sparkling snow. Using the golden ratio by multiplying the length and height by 0.618, I find where the bear should be bounding through the snow to look at the magic sparkles dancing their way across the scene. Working from reference or reference photos allows me to get the right proportions, shadows, and overall feel of my subjects. For this painting, I decided to use bright pink for my underpainting. Now, I typically use burnt umber or burnt sienna as a toner in order to mix my colors better. I have found that working from a toned canvas makes my colors softer yet more contrasted. It pulls the lights and the shadows well. Also, if I miss a spot, I know right away that I missed it since it has a different color. And I use bright pink because I wanted it to show through if I missed a spot and have just some of those like little whimsical bright pink highlights popping through. The question I get asked a ton from new artists is what paint do I use and what kind of brushes do I use? What I tell most people is that the brushes don't really matter. If you get the best or most expensive brushes, just some find something that works for you. What is important is getting nice, light, fast paint that you are comfortable with. I was introduced to dagger brushes and love them. They are like a combination saw that can do cross or rip cuts. They can do big strokes, small strokes, lines, or general textures. I use th synthetic butt brushes. They are a little smoother than hair, but both have their uses. As for my paint, I use Liquitex Basics. They are transparent and go well with layering. I have heard them be referred to as the genius's paint, since you need to think in layers. Now, I don't know about that, but they do work well and they are light fast. That means that they won't fade with time or when exposed to light.
I also try to work in three steps. I call these steps blocking in, refining, and details. Blocking in is just what it sounds like. Loose blocking in of a base coat of paint. It gives the general impression of the thing that I am painting. I use larger brushes for this in order to keep the feeling loose. I then go into refining stage and refine the shapes and tones. I use mixing white in, the, in my color mixing during these first two stages of painting. It keeps the tone low and warms up the color. Then during detail phase I switch to titanium white while mixing to bring out the brightest highlights. This helps me keep those last sparkly bright details brighter than my mid-tones. I use small brushes here and put in my final details. I do this over and over in different places to add layers and complexity to my paintings.
Let's transition a bit to the story of this painting. There were two or three key moments where I changed my mind and went in a different direction. I thought it would be cool to add a misty, vaporized breath coming from the grizzly to really send home that this mountain is cold and there was a contrast between the warm breath of the bear. Unfortunately, it just looked distracting and out of focus. So I had to cover and reconstruct the left side of the bear as well as the mountain that I had covered. The next area was in the snow below the bear. I wanted to have a single brown paper wrapped present from Santa scattered with bright glittery biodegradable ornaments strewn around. Note I wanted to be eco-friendly in case the bear got into the wrapping paper or put the ornaments in its mouth. Even though it's a fictional bear, I wanted it to be safe. I am still a nature lover after all. This again was too distracting. It drew too much attention from the bear's face and fantastic sunset behind him. So I covered them up and made bigger snow drifts on the side of the mountain. I also know many images of grizzly bear images depict them as roaring or standing menacingly um, and when most of the time when I have seen them, they're walking around or looking around. For being incredibly powerful animals, they have a sense of curiosity to them. And I knew that is what I wanted to portray in this painting. Now, I needed something for him to be curious about, so what should I do? about Christmas magic? You know, in most movies where a miracle happens and gold and sil silver sparkles like float around like a little fairy wisp? What if I use some of that as well as sparkly snow to add a sense of Christmas wonder? I have gold, silver, and pearlescent paint at my disposal, so why not? What's the worst that can happen? Painted it once, I can do it again. Luckily, it turned out amazing. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this adventure. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and God bless.